In this video, we're going to talk about Tesla trading under the ticker symbol TSLA. We're going to cover the price action over the past few days, the company itself, and the recommendations regarding buying, holding, or selling the shares. If you would like to see more stock analysis videos, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. But before today's video begins, I'd just like to clarify a few things about the timing when my videos are recorded, uploaded, and how much they react to the latest market updates. So most of my videos are recorded and scheduled the day before and uploaded for the next day. For five days out of seven, it's a trading day, so of course by the time the video goes live on my channel, the price would have already evolved from there. If there are significant and very volatile movements during the trading day, obviously they will not appear in the video on that day. But usually, to the extent possible, my analysis will be based on the medium term and not really focused on the intraday movements. The reason why it shouldn't matter that much either way is because most people investing in stocks invest for some kind of reason that takes time to get developed and that their positions are usually kept for at least a few weeks. With that being said, if there are significant stock price movements that happen afterwards, either they will not affect the overall picture or if they're significant enough, they will be mentioned in the next video about the stock with re-evaluations of the circumstances as needed. Tesla is an EV company that manufactures fully electric vehicles and provides services related to the energy storage and other renewable energy sources. It is a relatively diversified company with products servicing different sectors and different segments of customers with their own needs and budgets. Tesla is often viewed as the flagship of the entire sector because its stock fluctuations may influence the rest of the sector or even the tech stocks in general. And um, regarding the influence on the rest of the sector, we may come back to this a, a little bit later. Many portfolios that are future oriented tend to be relatively heavy on Tesla stock price because it is the undisputed leader in terms of sales, technical advances, and its established influence and presence in the sector. Another appeal of Tesla is its CEO, Elon Musk who is one of the most recognized names in the industry and has a global following. The market cap of Tesla is currently at $1.15 trillion and the enterprise value is at $866 million. The market cap is the price tag the financial market is willing to buy Tesla now with the consideration of its future potentials and the current fundamentals. The enterprise value of the company is the net result of the company's assets once all the debts are paid back. Usually the market cap is much higher than the enterprise value, which is the case for Tesla. Of course, there may be exceptions if the company is highly leveraged or if the company is under a lot of short selling pressures, which is not the case now. The quick ratio of Tesla is 1.09. The current ratio is 1.39 and the debt over equity is 0.36. So what this means is that Tesla is very liquid. Its assets can easily meet its short-term obligations and it's not very highly leveraged. The average trading volume of Tesla has been 31.9 million shares and the daily volumes have been 21.20 million shares, 20.9 million shares and 30.45 million shares. The one year beta of Tesla is currently 2.76 meaning it's very volatile compared to the rest of the market. Its 52-week high is $1,235, and the 52-week low is $501.80. Now, let's also talk about the options market for Tesla. In terms of volume and open interest, the options market seems to favor the call side. Generally speaking, the put options mean that the market expects a pullback, and the calls option mean that the market expects the price to move up. The key strike prices where there seems to be the most interest are $1,150, $1,200, and $1,300. Recently, Tesla has applied in Texas to start production and probably going to set up a gigafactory in the state in the near future. This marks yet another milestone 
in the growth potential of the company, as well as increasing its customer base in the US. Something to watch out for is whether the stock price will be able to go beyond the 1235 level, which is the current historical high, or is it going to have a double top situation followed by a series of pullbacks, which is normal given the circumstances. The price trend of Tesla is important for the rest of the EV sector, or at least has been, for the most part because it can move the entire sector, or at least influence it. That has been the case until now, but at the moment, it seems like the price action began to uncorrelate with other EV companies, suggesting that the market starts to look at other companies apart from Tesla itself. Despite record price levels, I think that calling for sure whether the company will be able to maintain this level of stock price is way too hard to call for the moment. Nevertheless, there should be different approaches to be set in place to deal with the stock to make sure that your to make sure that your risk is minimized. If your goal is to trade the stock, then there will be many catalysts coming down the pipe as we move ahead with not only the truck but the automatic driving. If you're talking about investing in Tesla in the long run, there is currently no indication that the stock may tank at all, but yet you have to make sure that the allocation for long-term investment in Tesla stock has enough room for later in case the stock price goes through pullbacks or if the market reevaluates the long-term valuation. Keep in mind that the current situation with Tesla has been relatively new and that the trend we're riding right now may not be the long-term tendency of the stock. Again, there is nothing that proves that, but for the sake of our portfolio, we have to be ready about this potential scenario. My suggestion is to keep around 5% of your portfolio as an investment-only allocation and to have another 5% of the portfolio for trading the stock in and out of the near terms up and downs. In both cases, I would suggest to wait for the price to either go beyond the recent high or to come back from a double top before making your decision. Your investment should also take into consideration the market conditions and the surrounding sentiment to determine what kind of asset should be picked, for how much and for how long. First of all, the financial market doesn't reflect the real economy. If the stock market is doing great, it doesn't necessarily mean that companies are hiring people, that salaries and living standards are rising. Sometimes it's the exact opposite that happens. Because the stock market is a pool of money where things come in and come out, going to different sectors to be placed. The capital may be used to be invested in a company to improve its efficiency and productivity, but it can also be used to buy up shares and assets in order to make a profit. This phenomenon is called financialization, and it means that the more money has been used for non-productive purposes like merger and acquisitions, fees to financial sectors, buying back equity and so on, the less there is for the real economy. Another way to put it is that ever since 2008, the Dow Jones has increased significantly. But people don't necessarily see this growth in tangible ways. This is why we gotta be careful with the assumptions that rising stock price means better outlook for the company. Sometimes it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that the asset is getting more expensive to be bought and that their yields is going down as a result. Additionally, some new phenomenons are now palpable, such as the creation of new bubbles, the participation and influence of retail traders in specific situations, and the anticipation of a massive recession or at least pullback. Bubbles have always been created on and off over the past few centuries, but nowadays, it's quite interesting to see the speed at which an organic bubble can be created back in 2020. Because almost immediately after the major collapse of the financial market back in early 2020, the market decided to pour a massive amount of capital in the EV sector and anything that's related to it. Stock prices went up the sky and for a moment, it really felt like any EV stock can be a golden goose. Another way to say this is that any SPAC with an EV company in it will become the next Tesla, right? Even if it didn't last that long, this episode definitely allowed the market participants to park a lot of their money in a sector, leaving it with either a lot of profits 
or at least avoiding incurring large losses because they left their money in the blue chips or the sectors heavily affected. The involvement of retail traders in companies has also been much more pronounced in recent months, especially in the scenarios of a short squeeze. Companies may have short sellers who believe that the stock will decrease in value. The short squeeze consists of buying the stock price up to force the short sellers to recover their positions, which will then also trigger an even bigger increase of stock price as a result. Of course, I'm not saying that this is always rational. I'm not even saying that those companies always have a convincing narrative. So, for example, if you play video games, ask yourself if you personally bought all your games at GameStop knowing that you can buy the same games just online in the comfort of your home. But nevertheless, retail traders do have a much more significant influence in the stock price nowadays for the better or worse. Personally, I think that as long as the volatility is high or gets higher, it'll create more opportunities. The final phenomenon is the anticipation of a recession. Many people have been expecting something of that sort to happen ever since 2008. There were quite a few companies that were supposed to go bankrupt because their debt structure is no longer sustainable or that their business model is bad. But overall, the system was able to hold its ground, especially in the North American market. This is partially because capital around the world often choose to come to the American capital market when things get heated back home. This is especially the case when geopolitical tensions increase around the world. In order to make sure that capital can provide a steady return without being affected too much by the central bank policies and inflations, I think that this phenomenon will increase its pace as time passes by, at least for the next couple of years. This is why we will likely see the blue chips continuing their ascension even if the growth stocks, even if for the growth stocks, things may be a lot more nuanced. The bottom line in all this is that the environment is getting more uncertain and volatile in a context where asset yields will probably remain quite low because the real economy cannot be improved with just money. As far as we're concerned, this means that the patience would be a great virtue for all of us and that there will be plenty of opportunities to eye for better prices. With that being said, always make sure to keep your positions diversified and keep the risk level under check. Speculative positions should play a small part in your overall portfolio. I would say it's better to keep them below 10 to 20% of your total holdings. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.